Morning Scramble is presented by Wildlife World Zoo and Aquarium. Oh, just a second. Hold on. Could, please, would you be patient with me for crying out loud? It, this is the holiday season, and you're supposed to be nice to folks like me. I'm looking up the definition of shamanism. When did well, well, why don't I just ask you? That'd be great. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our guest, Linda Starwolf, and I may call you Starwolf. Absolutely. Um, visionary shamanism. Uh, well, let's take the prefix off, first of all, and just mm -hmm. define the term shamanism. Uh, we know that a shaman is mm -hmm. another word for medicine man, isn't it? It is, and that's the traditional definition for the shaman. But I like to think of the shaman as the wounded healer. That's another definition. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, and we're all at some level, just for being human, have wounds. And when we learn how to transform those wounds, then we become shamanic ourselves. So are you saying that not only do we all have the need for healing, but we also have the ability to do the healing? Yes, yes. What if I don't know how? Well, that's where we come in. Part of what we do with our organizations, we teach people that they have a healer within. And most people don't know that. But any physician knows that. I've talked to physicians and they'll say, um, you know, although they have special techniques, that it's our bodies that have to do the healing. We also have a part of us that wants to heal us psychologically and spiritually. And when we tap into those parts of ourselves, it's an organic process that begins to happen. And most people don't know they have that power. No, is it harder now, even if we accept the idea uh, that somewhere, somewhere we have the power to do those things, is it harder now to get people to stop, to stop in the insane pace mm. that we all seem to have in this world uh, in, in order to reflect on that? Is it harder now than it was? You know, I think it's actually easier. Because really? I, yes, I do, because I think more people are up against the wall with things now. And, you know, what really causes people to change, you know, sad to say, oftentimes is consequences. It's things in their behavior, it's addictions, it's depression, and all we have to do is watch the commercials to know how much depression and anxiety there is in the world. So more well, and more... Some of the commercials actually cause the depression. <laughs> That's really true. And, and <laughs> really? I don't know if you know Dr. Wayne Dyer. Yes. But, uh -huh. Dr. Mm -hmm. Wayne Dyer, uh, we've known for years and years mm -hmm. and years. And, and uh, with all of the hundreds of millions of books uh, that are around by right. Wayne Dyer, the one thing I remember above all, he will not watch the news. Yeah. As, as uh, well read mm -hmm. as he is, as brilliant a man as he is, mm -hmm. he will not watch the news on a regular basis because he said it creates such a negative aura in his life. Well, it does because, you see, we don't really differentiate that what's happening uh, at this moment and what's already happened. When the mind sees something, when we observe something, we energetically begin to respond to it as if it's happening in that moment. So whatever trauma we're witnessing, there's a secondary post-traumatic stress resulting in that. You do breath work. Yes. Well, so does my wife. She's a really? psycho yeah. She's a psychotherapist, and, and for as long as I've known her, she's talked about mm -hmm. the fact that we breathe incorrectly, mm -hmm. and that breathing alone is an incredibly satisfying and healing mm -hmm. process. Is that what breath works is about? Well, breath work is about many things, but that's one way to do it, and I do that all day long. People say to me, "What do you do?" You know, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't. Uh, there's a lot of things that I don't do, and people say, well, what do you do? And I say, well, I breathe. And people give you a funny look when you say that. Mm -hmm. But breathing and focusing on the breath and filling your body up with the breath automatically begins to relieve stress. It begins to activate chemicals in your brain that brings in pleasure, that expands your mind. New ideas begin to come in. Um, people have visions that, and, um, that promote their work in the world, great ideas are birthed from their visions, from the breath. But we have to clear our minds and our energy fields in order to let that in. Yeah, but Star Wolf. Yes. I mean, there's an awful lot of folks right now, including me, saying, wait, all of that is possible with this free process yes. called breathing? Yes. Well, why is it that we haven't experienced that yet? Is it because we breathe incorrectly? Well, trauma. Trauma causes us to lock up and not breathe. And science shows us that we actually take in the trauma. It's like every cell in our body takes a Kodak moment. So if you have 10 trillion cells in your body, when a trauma happens, whether you witness an accident on the highway mm -hmm. or whether it's something from your childhood, 
immediately there is a, a, an image that goes into the cells of the body. And that is held there until we release it. Actually, the breathing and oxygenation of the cells releases the energy that holds those traumas in our cells. Can you give all of us a really brief Reader's Digest lesson in how to breathe? Mm. Well, what I say to people is close your eyes. Of course, you can't do that if you're driving. You, you know, no, and no, please. <laughs> Please. In fact, we don't even like you to do that when you're watching television here. But, however, we'll give you a break at this well, moment. Okay. So we yes. clo close your eyes unless you're doing something different. Right, right. Okay. Unless right. you're using... I'm um, here. Yes. Okay, here go. good. There you go. You've got it great. Okay. And drop your shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's the first okay. thing. Okay. And take a deep belly breath in. Really breathe it in. All the way in. Most people stop at about their throat. Take it down into your belly. And then exhale fully. And then again, breathe in. And this time, really focus on breathing into your heart. Most people can't even feel their heart. And feel your heart beating. Expand your heart. And then breathe into your mind and relax your face. And let a little kind of sigh out. Just, <sighs> <sighs> Oh, you know what? Seriously, and I wouldn't kid the audience, and I wouldn't fool you. You physically can you feel the tell difference. the difference. Absolutely. And I think I'm growing more hair, as a matter it's of fact. It's true. That, that uh, happens. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you, with simple breathing exercises, mm -hmm. I mean, I know that mm -hmm. we're talking about the complexities in right. your book, Visionary Shamanism, activating the imaginal cells mm -hmm. of the human energy field. There's a lot of things right, in here right. besides breathing. That's a, that's, okay. a, that's a fancy statement, but uh, it's actually a scientific statement that we have imaginal cells, just like the caterpillar. The caterpillar has to imagine itself as it's dissolving into becoming a butterfly. And if we want to change, we have to be able to imagine that. If we can't imagine change, it won't happen. And so often people are depressed, like their imagination is gone, their visionary um, abilities are gone. So if we can imagine it, it can come to pass. And we can't imagine it as long as we're locked up in our own pat old patterns. If I have just something as yes. simple and basic and consistent with so many people as a headache, yes. can those breathing exercises, that deep diaphragmatic breathing, can you actually cure yourself? Totally. I was once working with a used car salesman. He was trying to sell me a car, <laughs> and I sold him the breath. And what I mean by that is um, right in the middle of selling the car, I could tell he was really anxious, and I said to him, why don't you just take a deep breath? He looked at me like, who are you? <laughs> and in that process, he uh, took a couple of deep breaths, and he started crying in the parking lot. Did you get a good deal on the car? I did. He <laughs> sold it to me at cost. And he called me the next day and he said for the first time since his wife had died many years before that he would, had uh, taken himself off of a machine that helped him breathe at night because he couldn't breathe. Wow. And every automobile salesman right now is saying, no, 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 please. No, we don't want to sell at cost. Uh, we, you can also buy the book, of course, uh, with a small profit that goes uh, to Star Wolf. And the book is available, I'm assuming, in a number of places. Every place. You can go onto our website, which is shamanicbreathwork.org. And you can also go into Amazon or Barnes and & Noble. And on your website, they can get in touch with you and find out far more about how you might be able to actually master some shamanistic techniques. You learned about it on the morning scramble.